became like a community catalyst for individual urban farmers to kind of gather yeah. around and how that kind of sprouted into what it is. Yeah, I just, I'm stealthy, man. I just, you know, I quietly go about my business. <laughs> but uh, I'm off the loop. I used to be involved in a lot of, but, you know. Yeah. Right, no, yeah, no, but I, I, um, I did a garden in front of my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so the origin story of the Urban Farming Institute, yeah. at least from my perspective, it was, a, it was always called City, um, City Growers. City Growers, It yeah. started out of that, and I, it was actually the H Block, mm -hmm. you know, Humboldt Howlett up there, yeah. and I was, I'm walking, and my, my cousin lived up on, on Howlett, and I'm like, look at all this vacant land. This is back, this is back, you know, again, yeah. you know, 2000s, right? Yeah. And I'm like, huh, and then I was in my kitchen, and I'm, I'm watching us cut us all this green lettuce coming from California. Wait a second. And we got all this unemployment in our community. I was like, wait a second. We could be growing our own. So it was from a business perspective. I'm like, oh, how do I convert some of this land? Uh -huh. And literally, so we, we, I was, because I had a relationship with the Sportsman's Tennis Club, we were able to get a piece of land behind, behind them. The Sportsman's Tennis Club. Illegally. Sorry. We weren't supposed, <laughs> we weren't supposed to be like selling it. Uh -huh. Which is a funny story because then we had a we had to actually change the zoning laws. Right. And we were out doing it, and then and then it got, got when the mayor of Minneapolis was like, "Well, you can't be doing this." Can't be doing this, bro. But and then and that, that turned a whole other process, which is for another day. But bottom line is two things happened. One is we at the height of the city growers model, mm -hmm. we were selling like twenty thousand dollars on a quarter acre. <laughs> Of land. And I'm like, I'm like, we can do this. We can do it. And uh, and so we were doing like the fresh cut, you know, we had like the, the salad mix. You get like yeah. five, you get yeah. five seasons out of that stuff. Mixed greens, yep. And getting it out to the high end restaurants and all that other stuff, stuff. And it turned into I'm realizing, you know what? This is, needs to be subsidized by nonprofit dollars because the amount of work we did just to get the soil ready, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We were like making a new market, trying to make it work, a low margin business, farming, you don't make any money farming, what are you talking about? Right. And so it turned into, it was like we had to start a nonprofit, and that was the, that was, that's when we shifted and said, okay, the Urban Farming Institute. And we found Pat Spence, who's the current, and first and current uh, executive director, this is, I don't know, 12 years ago now. Yeah. Um, and again, another, you know, black run nonprofit. And, and the beautiful thing about the Urban Farming Institute, I like to say is, is how do we get some of this land back? Right. Oh, he's got to be coming. I'm talking right now. But how do we get some of this land back <laughs> to us? And and we and we formed probably one of the first in the country, uh, like a, a, a land trust spinoff specifically for urban it was land. Huge. I remember that. Yeah. And so now we we, we, we I don't know. We're a couple. He's of, an innovator. Couple, don't couple let me fool you right guys. Now. He's, he's, he's a, playing with the land trust. It's, not, it's actually not that common. It's, yeah. It's not as common as, as it should be. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a it's a, a way for folks to obtain land pretty much not you know uh, with no taxes uh, uh, use philanthropy for a, a positive use, I guess you say, and, and really for open space, to keep it open space, you know, for, and so we said, we'll keep it open space, and for our purpose, it'd be for urban farming. Um, and so, you, you, anyway, don't get me started, but in, in this neighborhood right here, you've got DSD, uh, S, D, and I, sorry, Dudley Neighborhood Inc., which is the land trust component of DSNI, Dudley Street Neighborhood Initiative, and one of the most innovative land trust models in the country, and this is this is not even me, right. but they basically, I think on three acres, where the land trust owns the land, and they let the folks, our folks own the buildings, but they limit speculation, so you can't resell, at, oh, right. there's a cap on the resale piece. Mm -hmm. So when we see all this spec, you know, gentrification happening, it didn't, yeah. didn't happen here because we own the land. You could just flip stuff. We, we, exactly, we own the land.